top destination for everything pop culture. My name is Aston and I'll be your host for today's episode of Lost Movie News. Now before we get started, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share so your friends can see. It helps us out a lot more than you ever would know. So let's jump into the first story of the day. So the first story of the day is going to be The Last Full Measure. So this movie is going to be directed by Todd Robinson and it's going to be starring Samuel L. Jackson, uh, Jackson <laughs> and Sebastian Stan. So. It's been a while since we've seen these two on screen together. When have we seen Sebastian Stan and Samuel Jackson together? I think the last time would be, uh, yeah, it would be the Winter Soldier when <laughs> Sebastian Stan is going to kill him. Even though we're going to definitely going to see these these two together again next year in Infinity Wars, we know they're linking up one more time for the last full measure. Um, Samuel L. Jackson just added on to there, so that's always good news. Like I actually. Uh, not really good news because Samuel Jackson adds his name to everything. Um, it's always hit and miss if it's going to be good or not. But with Sebastian Stan, he's normally in pretty um, in better material. So I see Samuel L. Jackson. Samuel Jackson can never be a bad thing though. So that's neither here nor there. It's just the fact we all know Samuel L. Jackson does not mind adding his name to a story or to a movie that he knows is going to be horrible. So. Yeah, but him adding his name to this is nothing but good. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I didn't see a release date when I was looking up, but just seeing Sebastian Stan working with Todd Robinson and um, Samuel Jackson is always a plus in my book. I'm looking forward to see this movie. Now, moving on to our next story. We have Michael Mann is finally getting a little bit of traction on this movie. It might still be a while away because Michael Mann has been trying to get this Ferrari movie off the ground for a while. So Ferrari is our next topic. We see uh, Michael Mann, he lost Christian Bell, but he gained Hugh Jackman. Now, it's always sad to see um, see like, an a, a actor with the caliber of Christian Bell leave a project, but adding Hugh Jackman is not a loss either. Like, it's, it's not a loss. If, like, if I'm gonna lose Christian Bell, but get Hugh Jackman, I wouldn't mind that at all. Like, it's not a problem at all. Like. That's definitely, a, I want to say is a step up because both these actors are great actors and even though they might excel at different like aspects of, of, a, of like a human, like of human nature, I think they both do, do great in this position. Like one of them, like, the roles might have been a little bit different here and there, a little bit different like quirks and things of that nature have been a little bit different, but I still see Hugh Jackman doing a great job as Ferrari. Um, so... I don't see anything bad about this, like it's besides losing Christian Bell. It's, but uh, yeah, so I think this is a, like a real good, new, like, good news for Michael Mann that he's actually got a nice um, box office lead man again. He'll help him get a little bit more traction on this. Um, now he probably lost Christian Bell due to scheduling. And Christian Bell is definitely in high demand. So is Hugh. But Christian Bell might have been like signed on in there. He's been losing projects. For the last couple of years trying to get this film done and he probably got to the point where like uh i don't know if i'll be able to do it anymore so he just moved on which is completely understandable in my book i respect it so but going on from there we have cars three so cars three is added two new people to the schedule not to the schedule but to the film so we got nathan fill in and we have Kerry Washington both being added as voice talents to the film. So they didn't get a name for um, for Nathan Fillion's character. We did get a kind of description of the character. He's going to be a car. He's going to be charismatic. He's going to be very business savvy. So to me, this sounds like he's going to be like an agent of some sort. Um, he's going to be some type of marketing guy. And I think that I think well, Cars Three. We, everybody know Cars Two wasn't that good. Car One was really good. But adding Nathan Philly and Kerry Washington is always a great to add talent. Um, with Kerry Washington's character, we know she's going to be part of the Lightning McQueen team. And she's going to focus on statistics, stats, um, things of that nature. So she's probably going to be the guy helping him out in the in the pit and everything. Or helping out with his training. When, she's like, when we hear stuff like, oh downgrade two percent everything she's probably gonna be one talking to him when he's like when she see him hitting corners and stuff like oh this is what we can do to improve your horsepower here this is how we can get you out the line faster and things of that nature so i think it's a great it's definitely a plus for cars three to add talent there's nothing wrong with that at all it's always a plus to add talent so 
Moving on from there, our next topic of the day opening this week is going to be Personal Shopper. So, this movie is going to be directed by Oliver Assist and it's going to be starring Christian Stewart. So, Christian Stewart basically lost her twin brother and she's actually going to be moving into his apartment and trying to make contact with him. So, as of right now, this film is actually sitting at 70%, I believe, last time I checked on Rotten Tomatoes. I haven't had a chance to see this film, but as we see, 70% is also um, ripe. It's, um, it's doing good with critics. I don't think any, um, I didn't see any, um, what do they call it, viewer like, ratings or anything like that. So, like, hopefully I get a chance to see it this weekend. I'll definitely do, like, maybe write a quick little um, review for it and everything and see how that turns out. So, I think you go check out this film. We'll be covering some of the other films, like, definitely Kong and everything later on in the week. Our next story of the day is Deadpool 2. So, Deadpool 2 is going to add on Janelle Monet. Well, not to add on, but she's the front runner for Domino, Janelle Monet, and I like to see that. Um, if you remember a couple weeks ago, we reported that Kerry Washington was actually cast, not casting, but running as a front runner, doing a couple um, screen testings and everything for Domino. So I'm glad to see that they're feeling um, that they're actually trying to stick with a woman of color for Domino, and that that's what they're like, in favor of is for a woman of color. I'm glad to see they're giving opportunities, I give more opportunities out for minorities and things of that nature. Um, I haven't seen Janelle Monae in too much work. I know she's done a, a couple things here and there, but she have not done anything major as in blockbuster wise. I know her more for her music, but I'm definitely like to see her um, step out, see what she can do as an action role. There's definitely going to be a lot of action role. Definitely going to be a lot of um, fighting, choreography going on. So I think she can pick those type of things up. I think she'll... Um, I don't know how well she'll do like, as acting. I said I haven't seen too many things in that nature of her. But as far as that, like, she's a beautiful young woman. I think she'll, like, she's gonna have a lot of makeup on anyway. She's not gonna really be able to see her face. But I think she'll do well in this role. Oh, like, she has time. So, and it's a smaller movie. I think she'll be fine in this role. Now moving to our next segment of the day, buy or sell. So our first buy or sell topic is episode eight. So. Episode 8, Star Wars, Episode 8, The um, the Last Jedi. And so, we, I think we haven't, but it pays to be a Disney shareholder. So, Disney shareholders was, um, was kind of like privy to actually seeing some footage for Episode 8. And apparently the first thing they seen was the first words were from Luke were, Who are you? So, a lot of people had theories that Luke knew who Ray was and this basically kind of throws those away like look he doesn't know who she is maybe he has seen her in some visions also but he does not personally know who she is he might know the face but he doesn't know the person now with that being said they said they saw a couple shots of Finn they seen a couple of Poe they seen a couple of Leia she was in um full like marriage military information like military thing so I love to see I'd love to get the chance to see this footage that the shareholders were privy to but um Obviously, we're never going to see it. I'm definitely going to buy that they've seen the information. I'm actually going to buy the first words are, who are you? Because if anyone just random show, randomly show up somewhere I'm hiding out, I'm going to be a little cautious of who they are, especially if I've been seeing visions of them. So I'm definitely like, I believe the first words are, who are you? And I believe that these shareholders actually got to see this because it's what they, um, this is what Disney and a lot of these big studios actually do. They have big movies coming out and they do these shareholder meetings. They tend to let the shareholders know what they're going on, what the shareholders can expect from these movies, how much they expect to return for, as far as financially wise. Because you know these, the, um, like Warner Brothers like, let their slate come out when they did their last shareholder meetings. Um, so it only makes sense to do like a little sizzle reel to let your um, shareholders know what they've been spending their money on. So. It makes sense. I'm definitely going to buy this story. With that being said, we're going to move on to our next um, topic of the day. So our next topic of the day is Thor. So Entertainment Weekly, they did um, their new magazine came out, uh, it's coming out. I'm sorry, came out. Can't even talk today. It's coming out today. And we we have Thor blessing the cover. So who, we got Thor, we got Tessa Thompson. And 
My favorite part is the new Thor cut. I love Thor's new haircut. It definitely really reminiscent of him being in war. So the short haircut, he doesn't have the long hair and everything where he's just running around being a prince. He's now in war. He um kind of like, even the way like it's cut, it's kind of look like it's uneven. Like it's that, like he just came through with a blade and just cut it off. It's definitely real prisoner um, prisoner s. So I, I'm definitely liking Thor's new look. Even the armor while like the, um, the bright colors and everything. I kind of understand why they went with the Thor Rider not with the real retro 80s look for his Thor logo now. Seeing these pictures, everything, we see the color, we see like the on um, the body paint and everything, the bright. <sighs> this is a great, these are some great, I love the color scheme. And going with that, let's see some of these pictures. So we got um, Kate Beckinsale is hella right here. Great, um, well actually right here. Great, I, I like to see the character design of it. We got Jeff Goldblum as um, the Grandmaster. I love his look. You have to see the little lips, the little paint coming down his lips and everything. I love seeing that. We got Tessa Thompson as Valkyrie right here. Um, we actually had a couple shots of her with Thor. We see this one right here, here Thor is talking. We see our next shot. This is our only look at Loki that we have right here. Loki obviously looks the same. He looks like he's actually at the same location as the Grand Master. If we look in the background, we see we have that colorful look back there going on. And then we got a couple shots of Thor. We got one like of Mark Ruffalo and Thor. Um, I don't think this is gonna be how Mark Ruffalo looks in the film because we see he's in like a full-blown suit. And I'll if I remember correctly, I think we're going to see a lot more Thor, not Thor, but a lot more Hulk than we are going to see Mark Ruffalo. I don't think we're going to see Banner at all in this film. So we might see him here and there, but I think for the most part, we're just going to see Hulk walking around. I think Hulk actually had, or Banner actually has um, more control over Hulk. So I think more Banner is going to shine through, like as far as IQ. I think he's actually going to be able to articulate himself, which means speaking. Um, I think he's going to be able to speak a little bit. I think he might be a little broke language with like, Hulk oh, smash. I think he's going to be a little bit into that like broken language like that. But for the most part, I love these images. These images look great. We haven't seen the hammer at all. I wonder when the hammer's going to um, come come through. But hey, but for what we see, I love these images. I think Thor is going to be great. I'm actually a big fan of the Thor series. I know a lot of people didn't like um. Like, I think it was number one. I like two a little bit more than one, or the two. I think a lot of people didn't like two as much as one, but hey, I can't get a, like, everybody has their own opinion, but I actually do like these films. So, moving on to our next story, we have Juan Antonio Burnett. Um, he actually released his first Jurassic World 2 picture. Um, we see it's just a little girl basically in a museum. It's, I actually want to buy this. I don't know where she's at. Maybe they're revisiting the island or something. Um, because there's no work. I don't know. Because like, there's no live dinosaurs in this image. I'm going to buy it definitely for the first pick of like this little teaser of, of we're on set, we're shooting. I'm definitely going to buy it at that um, aspect. But I would like to see um, some of the other cast members maybe like, like look at dinosaur or something like. Um, yeah, I would love to see something else. Now, our next, our last topic of the day is Rough Night releases a Red Band trailer. This has to be like one of my favorite stories of the day. I didn't expect too much from this trailer, but I'm definitely going to buy it. I'm going to keep a link for it down in the comment section. Not in the comment section, but um, inside the description. I might leave it in the comment section also as the first one there, just so you guys can see it. But I love this trailer. We got Zoe Kravitz. We got um, Scarlett Johansson. Um, I love this trailer. What can I say? We got, we got drug usage. We got um, women, like a group of women acting the fool. Um, I'm going to be like, I, I love this trailer. Like, I didn't think I was going to like it as much as I did going into it. But what can I say? Even when it starts off, you're like, we're going to be swimming in dicks. And then we swing to the left and we see Scarlett Johansson's fiance is like right there. And he's like, have a nice weekend. But besides that, I love, like, this is. This is an amazing trailer. Like, and there wasn't any points where it just fell flat to me. A lot of the jokes landed for me, especially like all the coke jokes and everything. This was a, yeah, I actually enjoyed this trailer a lot. Um, so I'm going to buy this. With that being said, that was our last story of the day. So I'm going to be wrapping this up. Thank you guys for tuning in. As always, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, share so your friends can see. And as always, stay lost.